as a wide open Noah fan who makes the catch. He's inside the 35. When you think back to your rookie season last year, Noah, was there a moment, a game where you look back and think, okay, like I'm, I'm getting the hang of this? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I would say it was probably the Browns game for me. Um, leading up to that game, I was kind of up and down um, throughout the season. And, uh, you know, going into that game, I was talking to some former teammates from college um, and uh, they were just kind of telling me, uh, you know, just, you know, have fun out there, enjoy the game, let it slow down for you, don't force anything. Ball over the middle, caught by Noah Fant, Fant running hard, runs right through somebody, touchdown Denver! I was having fun and things were going well and, you know, it was it was, it was something that was cool to cool to see and cool to be a part of. And Mac Jones going downtown here on the first play to Judy, and there he goes, goodbye Jerry Judy! I was pumped up, I mean, those guys, obviously Jerry, um, is a great receiver that kept coming from Alabama. And then KJ coming from Penn State, seeing him play quite a few times, just from him being in the Big Ten. And they're great receivers, and hopefully that opens up the, the middle of the field a little bit for me. So um, I'm definitely very excited for him. I know Cortland's excited to have him, and Drew's excited to have him. So um, I think they're going to help our offense out a lot. KJ Hamler in the clear! Which one of you is faster? <laughs> uh, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> KJ faster than you. Oh! <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna say, you know, hey, I don't know. Not by a lot, I ain't, I ain't not, not by a lot. But he faster. Me, me, me and Ju go, me and Ju gonna race one of these days. Did you have a particular game in college that made you believe you could play in the NFL? Jerry, I'll start with you. Was there a particular game that you, you recall? I, I, I probably say my sophomore year on this game, just because how I executed everything with all my assignment that I needed to do, um, I was playing fast. Tungo by Loa, still on target on third down, and Jerry Judy is in the end zone. I was like, I was already, I already knew like what the defense was doing before they even do it, just by film studying, um, putting in extra time. Um, but I, I'll probably say Ole Miss game. I would like to know during the draft who cried the most at your guys' house when you found out? Uh, I cried the most. I cried the most. Uh, <laughs> just because, just because I just, you know, immediately I thought about like all them, all them hard nights my dad made me get up at 6 a.m. and, you know, made me go run the hills. And when I didn't want to, like, you know, like my mom really didn't see the big picture. And um, my dad did, you know, he was, you know, he, he told me like, you know, I just wanted you to get a, a great education and just go to college for free. And, but everything else I had to do on my own. And so I think I worked my butt off for that just to get here. Chemistry is, is huge between a QB and his receivers with the current impact of the pandemic. What are things that you're able to do right now to uh, to build that with Drew? Um, right now, just communicating, really. Um, even though we can't really get on the field and stuff right now with each other, but as the communication, just know, getting to know each other personally, um, really, what really starts the bond and the connection um, once you know a guy personally, you could, that really helps you know him on the field as well, too. So right now, we're just getting, getting to know each other. You know, like, since all this stuff is going down, it's kind of hard to, you know, but it's more so, you know, we text you a lot. You know, I always ask some questions, you know, um, certain coverages, like how would you want this route and things of that nature, even though we physically can't do it. Um, so it's kind of more difficult, but, you know, just communication really is the biggest thing. All right, great stuff there. Matt Boyer interviewing Noah Fant, Jerry Judy, and KJ Hamler. Now, I, I love the part there from Noah Fant talking about the game that he got it. And, and of course, I think we've spent a lot of time this offseason wondering what's the next level for Noah Fant. It kind of feels like that Cleveland Browns game can be a bit of a blueprint, doesn't it? I, I certainly think it can, especially when you add weapons like KJ Hamler, Jerry Judy, along with Cortland Sutton, I think those three guys are going to do a lot for Fant's growth this season when it comes to getting out over the middle, kind of finding those seams that, you know, all the great tight ends in the league now kind of have that move, being able to find space, find the seam and get open. And then Fant can really use his speed. We saw it in the Cleveland game, just breaking out down the sideline for that incredible touchdown. So I, I think that the more weapons that you add around Noah, I think the growth is going to be exponential this season. Now, Ben, in that game, I remember talking to you afterwards and you said, now, that was a great play, the 75-yard touchdown, but at the same time, it was the benefit of poor tackling. Have you come around now and realized it's really the uber-athleticism of Noah Fant? Are you really ready to accept his athleticism and his talent? Well, I've always been a Noah Fant 
But I, I wanted to point out that, that specific game, uh, some things happened to break his way on that play. Not that we should hold our breath for that to happen all the time. Now, that being said, I think Matt made a great point. The, the idea of getting a Judy or a Hamler in here, getting a number three, whoever the number three target is in this offense is going to free up one and two if they can get somebody to establish that. And oh, by the way, you're getting a new offense that loves to feature the tight end splitting out as an off the line Y or in the screen game. So I think no offense prime for a big statistical and productive season. Uh, but I'm not going to have you selling me short on my fan status there, Ryan Edwards. Okay. All right. I, I'll back off just a little bit. Uh, real quick here, Matt, on uh, KJ Hamler and Jerry Judy, really good stuff there. I liked uh, Jerry Judy talking about when he knew he could play, uh, basically play at the, a high level. And then KJ Hamler, yeah, I think there's no real doubt about how KJ Hamler is uh, faster, probably in the straight line speed. But it almost seems like because the way Jerry Judy plays the game and his route running, that he actually has maybe a little bit of an advantage there. Yeah, I think when you think about Judy's skill set, he does a lot of things well. Maybe not necessarily one thing great, but just a ton of things very, very well. KJ Hamler, we, we heard him, you know, more of a slot guy, more of a speedster. And Jerry said it. He's fine with giving up the speed title. He does enough good things on his own to be able to give that to KJ. So I think both of them know that they complement each other very, very well. You know, KJ can kind of fill in the gaps where, where Judy might be lacking. And then Jerry really can, can, can do it all. So nothing to complain about there. I mean, in fairness to Jerry, Judy, he's acquiesced the speed title before and been just fine with it. <laughs> Always great. Yeah, that's, that's a really great point there. All right, well, thank you, Matt Boyer. Thank you, Jerry Judy, Noah Fant, KJ Hamler, Steve Atwater. Really big show for you tonight. For Benjamin Albright, I'm Ryan Edwards. Thank you for watching Broncos Country tonight. Oh.